G'day guys, welcome to Rumble's cooking channel. Um, I enjoyed doing the last cooking video, so I'm going to do it again. Um, this one's way different, but... So, I'm going to record two videos today. The first one is cooking, the second one is shipping a fish to the airport. Or like, yeah, uh, bagging and all that. Um, I have done a bagging video before, but I wasn't actually shipping a fish. This time, I'm going from start to finish actually sending a fish. But, today's video is going to be double cooked um, pork belly with pork crackle. Um, so I'm doing this in the Weber. I haven't done it in the Weber before, but I'm quite experienced with the Weber. But the only thing I worry about is getting it up to like 250 degrees for that last 15 minutes. But I'm going to give it a go. If it doesn't work, I'll have the oven preheated because I'm doing veggies in the oven. So if it doesn't work, we'll just throw it in the oven for that last um, 15 minutes. Righto, so lighting your Weber. Um, if you're on the shortcut, you can buy like a little, um, it's like a teapot thing, and you just put it over like your, your gas stove and light them, but I don't have a gas stove, so I don't have that luxury. Um, I just use fire lighters because it's 90 cents a packet, but if you're not that confident with fire lighters, um, the fire lighting gel is the way to go. So the gel works real good. I don't know why I don't buy it, I'm just a cheap ass. I buy the 99 cent cheap shit you can buy. So I've got, so to start off with, I'm trying to get this up to over 230, 240 degrees. So I've got a temperature gauge in here and um, I've got one, two, three ignition points. So I'm trying to get that whole pack going. Um, I'm using like charcoal chunks they burn way hotter. So what will happen, right? Charcoal chunks to get it all running. Um, I don't know why it's smoking so much. I think it might be a bit damp. That could be a problem. And then once it's lit, once I've done that first 10 minutes, you guys will see what I'm talking about. I, I generally add some bricks for my long activity. Is that a word? Yeah. To get it like long time cooking. So these don't burn as hot as these. But I, I like to keep both. Um, anybody who's cooked on a Weber, everybody's got their own preference. This is mine. Um, so the key to lighting it, my, my advice is patience. So you put your fire lighters in, and then like this point here, it looks like it's going out. And that's when people start messing with it and changing shit. Don't, just leave it and let it do its thing and it, no lid on um, and just leave it. Alright, come, we'll come back to that in 10 minutes. Let's go look at the pork. Alright guys, so we've got some wa some warm water. Uh, you put hot water in there. Two chopped up onions. Kept them nice and thick. I like thick onions because that we'll be serving these onions. And um, six of these bad boys. Star anise or and yeah. Star Anise, fuck knows what they're called. Anyway, six of them. Um, so this is our this is our moisture tray that goes underneath our meat. So I've got our tray in there. We've I've thrown a couple of the heat beads on top. Um, I, I scrub this a little bit because the meat's going straight on it, and otherwise I just don't want it to stick to it too much. Um, yeah, we'll just give that a few more, ten more minutes with no cover on it before we go too far. So now, like, if you've never used coal before, it looks like nothing's happening. Just, you can see it, all the white bits. It's like white all underneath. It'll take off. Just patience is key. So now we're going to start scoring our pork skin. Um, you need quite a sharp knife to do this. And I try not to go all the way through, just through the skin, but I find this part quite difficult. Um, but this is what really makes it crackle on top.
Okay, so next. So then we put salt on it. I only use most of this salt. Um, don't be afraid to salt it up. When you get to the end, I don't know how it really works, guys. You cover it in salt, and then at the end, it's not overly salty. The way it like cooks it in or something, I don't really know, but well, you guys know what pork crackling is like. It is salty, I shouldn't say that, but it just, it works. Let me just get some olive oil on there. Um, I think I've kind of done that in the wrong order. I should have done olive oil and then added the salt, but it shouldn't really matter. So that's raging now, guys. This should be 200 degrees, I reckon. We've got our temperature gauge there. So I try to keep the temperature gauge as um, close to where I'm going to put the meat as possible. And so I've got the vent sitting straight over the coal so the air's sucking up that way. Both vents are fully open. We'll check that in 10 minutes, or well, not even 5 minutes, but that should bump up real fast. So guys, while you're waiting for your uh, Weber to get to temperature, you can strip some females. Now, what would a video be without a bit of fish involved um, so sorry about dirty glass guys but so, so I got fish like marbles which I strip on stripping days but fish like I've got different priorities so like if the bacchromus are holding um, they're an instant stripper well within th five days sort of thing because it's two females one male high risk colony in my opinion so the more fry I can strip early the better A because I want to grow out a fresh colony which I already have as you guys know and B I don't like when I've got small groups I don't like the females holding for long because they um, get a bit malnourished and chances males will wipe them out now this colony was pretty big it was I bought two separate groups it was looking real good it had like 12 fish and it ended up being six or seven males. So then I ended up selling off all the males and bought another male off a friend because it was better quality than um, what I had. So then the one male that I bought like got died a week after I got it. So then I was like, oh damn, I've only got a group of females here. And against my um, venting abilities one of the what I thought was females turned out to be a male so I've ended up with a breeding group even though I thought I didn't have one but here's the kicker there's like I think there's four girls one male in there but I only ever get the one girl breeding and I don't know why they're really really bad breeders I've only ever got I think three mouthfuls out of these guys I've got one group growing out, um, like you can just, I don't know, they've never been right since the day I got them all. I've like wormed them, given them a course of metro, um, obviously they get daily water changes and there's the male there. So um, this tank's really dirty. The glass I mean. I just tried to wipe it but it's just got like a grey haze on it. Anyway I'm gonna strip that girl up there. Alright so I've caught her guys. Um, if I'm only stripping one fish I don't bother setting up the table like you guys have seen before. Um, let's see what she's got. Nice big batch of eggs. So now, one thing that catches me with the dimmy comps. See, if you look from the top, her mouth is spread out sideways. 
they generally don't get as much of a bulge underneath so they are a little bit harder to pick when they're holding um, looks like we've got a few infertile in there but only like two or three so um, I'll get that in a tumbler now so guys these are a little bit premature of what I like stripping but I know she's been holding for at least like five days four days so um it's not too early but it's earlier than I like but it is what it is guys let's get back to cooking hey guys so I think I got a bit excited in the fish room and I forgot to film myself putting the meat in so it's been in for about half an hour now the temperature gauge was up at 200 when I put it in and then I put the lid on and I wound the vents back halfway so now it's at about 180 I do want to get it a little bit lower than that so I've half closed the bottom vent as well and we'll see how that goes I'll just keep checking it every 20 minutes all right guys so it's been in there about an hour now that's sitting on 150 which is exactly where we want it um, we've got an hour to go looking at my coal should line up pretty well um, I don't really need to do anything here we'll just let it go <coughs> alright guys so I got carried away taking photos I ended up leaving this in the Weber for um, two and a half hours so now I'm going to it, now it's resting, it's cooling down um, pretty much going to let it get close to room temperature and then I'm going to crisp it up in the oven but I just can't be bothered lighting the Weber again um, my Weber's too thin, the metal, so I don't, I, I'm not getting the temperature that I need to crisp it it did start to crackle a little bit but I think to avoid frustration I'm going to do it in the oven and we're still going to get all the flavours of the um, Weber through the meat. Alright guys, so just chucking it back in the oven. Mrs. ate a chunk off it there, bitch. Um, I've got it on 180. I'll run it at this for like 45 minutes. And then 15 minutes or so, I'll, I'll pop it up to 250 max. See if we get some crackling going. Um, Mrs. doing up veggies and that. I'm not going to film that. You guys don't give a fuck about veggies. Alright guys, so we've been on 250 for a while now. It's a moment of truth. Yeah, look at that guys. That's perfect. I'm absolutely wrapped. There's that little section there which hasn't crackled but there's only two of us and cracklings, that's plenty of crackle for us and this is going to be lunch rolls tomorrow as well so that'll be good. Um, hope you guys enjoyed something different. Um, my last cooking video got a few good comments so I thought I'd do another one. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, if you like this video hit like, hit subscribe up in the corner there and uh, bye.